Okay, folks. So uh, I'm going to work you through setting up Abogadro on um, a Mac. So what I have up here is the actual uh, lab page. And I went to this first website. And I went ahead and did the download and got the um, program. And have started that process. But um, I think I just froze up my computer. There, okay. But when I actually run the program it gives, we get this nice little arrow, can't be um, run because it can't be verified. I'm going to hit cancel on that, and then I'm going to do it again. All right. Hmm. Right click and then open. That's it. So right click and open and hit open. It will actually install properly. Now there's nothing wrong with this program. Um, it works just fine. I just downloaded this today. So it's um, a safe to use program. It doesn't do much. Now there's a chance it's going to crash here and then I'll have to pause the video and start again. Um, it has a lot to do with my particular program. All right, all right, but it's working. All right, so good, good. All right, and this is all that we're going to see on Avogadro. It is just a standard screen, and um, we can start building molecules right away. And I did click on the screen. It might still be setting things up. I hear my hard drive going. Okay, it was. Get rid of one of these. All right. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of both those and just start from scratch. All right, so I just clicked and got a single carbon, which is the black marble, with four hydrons coming off of it. There is another one back behind there. Rotate this so we can see it. And I'm just going to build a simple four carbon molecule. And I did that by clicking on the hydrogens themselves. And each one I clicked on turned into a carbon. All right, now I'm gonna do something a little bit more than this. I'm actually also going to change one of these carbons into an oxygen. And I unclicked that because I wanted that just to put an oxygen there rather than an OH. Because what I wanna do to make a double bond there. See how it's got right now just a single bond? Now, theoretically, I have this angle fine. If I go back to my drawing mode and click on that bond, it should turn it into a double bond. And it didn't. It turned that into a carbon. So, change that back. Oh, that's nitrogen. And now let's try this bond again. Yeah, I found out Avogadro really likes to have you right at the right angle or else it doesn't actually do. Oops. I have no idea what it's doing now. Oh, it's in movement mode. I'm going to try deleting this hydrogen by, in my drawing mode, right click on it, go back into this, and I want this to be an oxygen. I want it to be a double bond. And you're supposed to just have to click on that bond and get it to change. And it certainly doesn't want to do that for me. Now, I think the problem is it's such a small bond. 
that it thinks I'm touching somewhere else. There it goes. Just had to have the angle just right and got in there and click and made it a double bond. All right. So I now have four carbons. Two N carbons have hydrogens. The three hydrogens. The middle one has two. This one has no hydrogens, but it has an oxygen to it. Um, that is actually what I wanted. So, um, and I don't have any extra hydrogens or anything unnecessary. I do have something interesting going on. We think about the structure at that position, being that this carbon that I have my mouse on has three bonding groups off of it. We should expect 120 degree bond angles and trigonal planar. Yet here in our model, excuse me, in our model, we can clearly see that is not a plane. That's definitely more like trigonal pyramidal. All right, so what we need to do is get it to adjust. Fortunately, that's a heck of a lot easier than adding that double bond. On Falchio, we just go here to this E, which is our auto, auto, auto optimizations. And if we hit start, it's actually manipulating that molecule force. And I can move it and we can see that it just made that section perfectly flat. And more importantly, if you think about it, look how, how pretty and uniform this molecule looks. Everything's kind of zigzag. Kind of what we'd expect on a, um, yeah. Dragging it up into the picture. But what's neat about this, you notice how I drag it, it's actually readjusting back into itself. Um, it's still auto-optimizing. Um, it will do that until I actually tell it to stop. And now all of a sudden, if I start maneuvering, moving stuff around, I will actually get physical contact with it and it's not dragging the molecule all right but I have it stable now and I have a, an optimized structure all right once we've optimized a structure we can actually do something kind of interesting so we're going to do a lot more with Ab uh, with Avogadro as we get into the text more because there's a lot of things they can do but the first thing we're going to do and what we're going to do for this lab is actually look at the um electrostatic potential of the molecule. So we're going to go here to extensions and molecular mechanics. Sorry, under extensions down at the bottom, we're going to go to surfaces, create surfaces. And the surface that we want is a van der Waal surface that is colored as if it is electrostatic potential. And resolution doesn't necessarily matter. My computer's fast enough. I've been just using high. and close and it will put that surface on there theoretically hmm. Well, it did not want to do it, apparently. Let me try this. Oh, wait, it, it is doing something. It's thinking. It wasn't actually done with the surface, apparently. That or it's crashing. In theory, I should have a bubble of stuff around that atom right now that is showing uh, a red hue near that electronegative oxygen and slightly blue things around the hydrogens. But I actually think I might be... Okay, it did actually. Oh, and it's actually doing the center that I clicked on. <laughs> oh, my computer's not handling the Macintosh too well right now. All right, but this is kind of interesting. So electronegativity, we have a red hue around that auction, and we have blue on um, those four hydrogens at the bottom. And we will find that the electronegative auction is weakening those H bonds, making them far more acidic. So even those are those are just CH bonds, they're almost acidic in nature just because of that carbonyl. And that's why they, we see the blue color. Now, um, electrostatic potential maps that we see in our book the white areas here are typically green 
because they have red, blue, and then green is more neutral. Avogadro seems to use white as that neutral. Um, there probably is a way to change that. I haven't bothered to look into it, though. All right, but that is something we can do that's actually pretty darn neat, so you can actually see electrostatic potentials. Uh, something else that you might like under properties, um, molecular properties, uh, it's going to actually, the program that is, look up the actual name based on how you put it together. And it is actually pretty versatile. I've actually given it some pretty complex things, and it was able to get a reasonable name with them in a short amount of time. Now, I'm limited with the speed of my internet right now, which is why this is sitting on unknown. Um, more than likely, your internet connection is noticeably better. So that will probably pop up with a name much quicker. This one should be coming up with a name of uh, 2-butanone or butan 2 ohm I'm not going to let it bother to finish because it's clearly hung up on its banking. All right. But um, all I want you to do in the lab is once you get electrostatic potential, I want you, excuse me, I want you to go up here to export and then export a graphics. And... Um, the image format doesn't really matter, but I know our choices aren't huge on this program. Computer is slow today. Yeah. And PNG is fine. But any one of these is fine, but PNG is upload, uploads into uh, Canvas just well. Fine. Save it wherever it goes. Give it a name. I would call this butane 2 ohm or 2 butanone because that's what it actually is. And then you'll upload those pictures to me. Now, you're not going to do this one. On your lab, you are doing... two fluorobutane and salicylic acid. Now, salicylic acid, awfully complex, right? Let me show you something you can do on structures. So um, I can go up here and do a new drawing. And rather than draw it like I just did, I'm going to go back up here and you know how we add an export for images? Well, we can import a chemical name. And it's pretty actually versatile. So Salicylic acid is a derivative that's used to make aspirin. And if I type in aspirin, I actually will. Now, it's it, it's in there. Uh, this comes back to my internet's not too good right now. But um, let me try a different one. So it was 2-fluorobutane. Yeah, my computer's not even really seeing the internet right now. But um, they're in there because I actually tried all this earlier. And it will actually find those drawings and actually fully draw out the structure. Um, you'll still need to do that optimizing the structure, which you'll do with, uh, um, well, I'll go back to this drawing we have. You still will need to just click start. You don't really need to change anything. We have different cat ways to calculate it, but all these do basically the same thing. They're going to treat the... Um, bonds like little springs and the carbons like charged particles and they're going to get that structure as relaxed as they possibly can by allowing things to move and spin and such um, but it does it very quick does a very good job of it for the most part and you can get these electrostatic potential maps on a three-dimensional pretty drawing and hopefully your mac is handling this better than mine clear clearly is but i uh made the mistake of updating this to the latest and greatest version of Mac, which is full 64-bit, and I still have quite a few issues with it. Um, but it's okay. It still works. Now, um, the other part, see how I have it marked out right now? The biggest reason I have it marked out is because even though this Falcio, if you actually go to this, um, it does actually claim to have a Mac version. And it does say 10.6 or later. Um, I was not able to get this to work, even with their directions they talk about. Now, they're basically saying this first part because Macs don't typically open zip files properly. Well, I opened it with multiple techniques and even tried this. And I, I can't get it to actually run. It actually doesn't even give me a decent error. 
just told me Abigail Door crashed. But it doesn't even give me a decent error. I think it said something about I can't actually access a write protected service folder or something weird. So it's not even really a good error message. But if you can get that to work, um, Falcio does an awesome job with um, predicting vibrational modes. Um, going to come in handy when we get to our infrared spectra later on in the lab. Um, but I hope to have Avogadro working well enough that it can do that when we get to that chapter. So I am slowly just going to phase this program out because I can't get the Mac version to work, even though it's not even really two years old yet. Um, I have a feeling it has a lot to do with this right here. They actually made it the 32-bit version, and Macs don't like 32-bit programs anymore. So uh, if you can get that to work, great. Um, let me know how you did, and maybe I can get it to work on my computer as well. Um, otherwise, just do that first part that deals with just Avogadro for the 2-fluorobutane and salicylic acid.